All right, so you guys heard the word ACL a lot in the sports world and in basketball, but do you actually know what the ACL is, what it does, how it's injured, and the overall mechanism of the ACL? In today's video, we're gonna go over all things related to the ACL and how it's injured, how we test for it, and kind of what to expect with the injury. So stay tuned, I think you'll like what we got for you. What's good Hoopers, my name is Gabe Ignacio, Doctor of Physical Therapy, Board Certified Orthopedic Clinical Specialist, and Co-Founder of the Basketball Doctors alongside with Dr. Marco Lopez. And the goal of the Basketball Doctors is to help the basketball community by empowering them with evidence-based information on all things basketball in terms of related to rehab and sports performance. If it's your first time here, we'd really appreciate it if you like, subscribe, comment, and share with your family or friends to help our channel grow as much as it can. All this information is just for educational purposes only, so if you have any questions, please seek out a healthcare professional, reach out to us via email or direct messaging. So with that being said, we're going to dive into the topic of today of all things related to ACL. Alright guys, so let's go over the basic anatomy of a knee joint here. So we're going to kind of orient you real quick. So outside part, this is a right knee, so tib tibia down below here, fibula, femur up high, and this is the inside part. And then we have the patella right over here. And then we're gonna go over the structures, the main structures that you need to know. So on the outside part here, you have the LCL or lateral collateral ligament, the inside the MCL, medial collateral ligament. And then we have deep inside here is the ACL, that big one right there. And then in the back, just gonna show you here is the PCL. And this blue thing on this model is your meniscus or the cartilage in between the tibia and the femur. And we're gonna zone in here on the ACL. So as you can see here, it attaches kind of on the tibia and it goes to the femur on the inside part of this lateral femoral condyle. And the primary function of the ACL is to prevent anterior translation of the tibia on the femur or essentially hyperextension of the knee. Secondarily, it also prevents internal rotation of the tibia on the femur. So when the tibia rotates inward and the femur rotates outward, that's the secondary movement that it protects. And then finally, the valgus stress and then that's what we most commonly see with a knee bends inward and stresses that tendon. You also have a lot of different ligaments that help support those other rotational and side-to-side um, -side movements, but primarily the ACL prevents that hyperextension. Okay, so now we're gonna go over how the ACL is typically injured. As you kind of what we went over is the three primary movements that the ACL prevents is that hyperextension, internal rotation, and valgus movement. Um, and the way that we commonly see it in basketball is both contact and non-contact. So contact is pretty much what it sounds like is when someone's driving to the paint or someone's playing defense or something and someone actually impacts their knee and causes either a hyperextension movement, internal rotation, or valgus movement. Um, and that can be in combination of all those three at the same time. And ideally we don't want that, but it does happen quite often, especially with those contact injuries. Those ones, unfortunately, are not preventable. It's just part of the sport, unfortunately, those injuries are freak accidents and can happen to anybody. The ones that we do want to make a big impact in are these non-contact ones. So non-contact, again, sounds exactly what it sounds like, is that no one actually comes in contact in you, both in the air or when your feet are on the ground. And what happens is that when the foot is planted, typically when landing, rebounding, or cutting is when we see it a lot in basketball, when that causes that hyperextension moment alongside with either internal rotation or that valgus movement. You see it all the time when that knee comes in, knee buckles, and we unfortunately see that injury happen to that ACL. Some really common signs and symptoms that you'll hear people say and what you'll see is that there's usually an audible pop. Typically most players will hear a pop when it happens or they might not hear it just because of the loud noise or things just happen so quickly. The majority of the time when people are aware of it, they'll hear a pop. And then what you'll notice too with the ACL versus all the other injuries is that swelling happens immediately. Usually within 30 minutes, that knee is pretty swollen in comparison to other injuries. Some of them take longer than an hour or so before the swelling starts coming up. So those are typically the signs and symptoms that come on. There's other ones that come on but it's typically a result of the swelling and other symptoms that are associated with that. All right, so now that you know the signs and symptoms, the mechanism of injury, now the question is how do we test for it and how do we know if you actually injured the ACL? 
So we have three clinical tests that we typically use on the court or in the rehab setting to test for the ACL if it is compromised or not. And the gold standard right now is the Lachman's test. So this is one that you see commonly on the side of the field or side of the court where the athlete is laying on their back like so. The trainer or someone will stabilize the femur and then you're gonna provide an anterior glide of the tibia. So remember what we talked about in terms of the function of the knee joint. We're essentially trying to feel how that tibia is moving on the femur. And if the ACL is intact, a lot of us have that feel of that firm give where it's not really going further than what it normally does. If we feel like the ACL is compromised, there'll be a lot more laxity and a lot more gapping when we do that test. And that's the gold standard for on the court or testing right away. There's also the anterior drawer test and the pivot test, pivot shift test. Those are other ones that we can use to help build a picture on whether we know uh, the ACL is compromised or not. Again, these are just clinical tests and we usually use that in conjunction of like the MOI, signs and symptoms, and these tests to kind of build a picture if they truly injured it or not. The only way to truly know is, um, which is the gold standard, is an MRI. MRIs will show the soft tissue structures and tell us clearly if and how damaged the ACL is. All right, so if you had a confirmed diagnosis of an ACL rupture, the question becomes, do I need surgery? So it's honestly hard for us to say that. The gold standard is yes, but honestly, it's kind of 50-50 with yes and no. There's some research out there that kind of supports not having surgery, it just depends on what your signs and symptom bars, what is your clinical presentation, how is that instability, your level of play, and what you're trying to get back to. So there's a lot of factors that come into deciding if you should have surgery or not. Um, and we'll go further into that topic in future videos, but right now it's hard for us to say, yes, definitely you should get an ACL reconstruction or no. But if you're at a high level functioning basketball player, you will likely need ACL reconstruction because it's such a hard and dynamic sport that if you don't have that passive structure stability, you're gonna set yourself up for wear and tear on the knee joint and you might not be able to function and perform at your highest level. Again, we'll go further into this detail in future videos, but right now it's hard for us to say yes or no. The next question we get asked a lot of is how long am I out for? And it depends on if you had surgery or not, and then which graph you choose. So we're going to go very generic with this one. We'll cover this more in detail in another video as well. But for example, the time, general time frame for return to sport after ACL reconstruction is they say nine months, but honestly, we usually tell people at least a year, if not longer. Uh, we highly recommend that you take your time with this injury and if you have surgery. But generally with a autograph, so if you use your own graft, typically the return to sport is 9 to 12 months. And then if you use an allograft or a cadaver graft, or essentially not your own, the return to sport time frame is a little bit longer, it's usually 10 to 14 months. But like I said, we'll go into this in further detail in a future video. If you liked or learned something new in this video, please like, subscribe, comment, share with your family and friends. And it would be really appreciated because it helped our channel grow and reach as many hoopers as possible. Again, we are the Basketball Doctors. That's Ball for Life, guys.